there's just so many other coincidences that just don't bode in favor of Donna's innocence that it would be, I don't know, it would be negligent to, you know, just assume that she was an innocent bystander. Hey guys, welcome back to Presume Legal. I am Misha Janice. I am an entrepreneur and an attorney licensed in New York and Florida. You guys, I just uploaded my video, um, which was an ode to Donna Sue, um, asking who is Donna Sue really? This question has come up quite a bit because there are a lot of differing opinions, apparently about the personality of, um, of Donna, who is currently awaiting trial on charges of uh, first-degree murder, and consp conspiring to murder, and uh, solicitation for murder. So you guys, I somehow came across an article that... And hear me out, hear me out, okay? I came across this article um, and it was somebody writing an, uh, a, a blog post and it's titled In Defense of Donna Adelson on Charges of Murder. Now, you know me. I'm a little nosy. So I had to see what this person had to say. I quickly uh, scanned the article and I was like, mm -mm. I need to share this. If I have to go through this, you have to go through this. I am the type of person that I, I like seeing both sides, right? I like seeing both sides. I like listening to the pros and the cons. I like seeing the evidence on both sides before making a final judgment, right? It's only right. I'm not a bandwagonist. I don't, you know, just automatically jump to conclusions just because everybody else seems to. I really have been looking at this case and trying to find reasons why the Adelsons, and in this case, Donna Adelson, might not be guilty of the charges that she's allegedly um uh, that she's alleged to have taken part in. So um, with that said, I would like to read this article with you guys and, um, you know, get your opinion. So this article was posted on uh, Hub Pages, which I didn't even know was still around. Like, I feel like I remember Hub Pages from the late 90s, but... I don't know. Here we go. And I'll read you through this article. It was posted by somebody named Joe Douglas. And it was posted earlier this month. So that's January 2024. And we'll see if we can get through the ads um, while reading it. She has a nice picture of Dan Markell there. Starts out the article saying, I would like to give my condolences to the Markle family, Phil Rush, Sherry, and entire Markle family. I am in no way, I no way am, oh gosh, in no way am I defending what the Adelsons have done to Dan, but I will say I don't believe true justice will ever be served for what they have done. Okay. I will say that Donna and Charlie needed to charge for their involvement, but I just that Wendy's family were also victims of Wendy. She used her family to build a hatred towards Dan that spread everywhere. Her lies, greed, and deception have destroyed so many lives. So first things first, there's gonna be a lot of grammatical errors in here. Um, I don't know if this was a, a, a speak to text article, but I'm going to try and get through it as best as I can. I, I I see the stance that the author is coming from already. We can make it through. Moving on. 
I don't believe for a second that Donna and Charlie set up that hit. All the evidence points to Katie, Wendy, and Katie setting up that hit. Okay, go on. I cannot imagine the torment that Donna would have been going through from the lies Wendy had told her. If it were my child, I would have said some horrible things as well. Donna and Charlie didn't learn the truth about Wendy's deception until the trials. Now, I don't know how that how true that is, but if it's true that Wendy basically poisoned the minds of her family, um, telling them all kinds of maybe exaggerated tall tales about what Dan Markell had been doing to her, potentially to the children. Um, I can see where the family hearing all this, you know, this terrible um, news, I can see how they would obviously have negative feelings towards Dan Markell. Okay. Let's keep going. Donna and Charlie will never see the light of day if they don't tell the truth about Wendy's involvement. So the author is clearly saying that uh, Wendy is to blame for all of this. Not that I agree. Um, I think that they all have their part to play, but I don't. I don't think that Donna and Charlie were um, innocent bystanders. Basically. When Wendy spoke to her mother, she used an app she knew could be traced by police. Wendy knew for a fact that the nasty emails from Donna would be found by police. I don't, I don't know why she thinks that. The lack of communication between Wendy and the others was so obvious, she was covering her tracks. There was no doubt Wendy had been working on this plan for a long time. Okay. <laughs> This is Wendy testifying at her brother's trial. She laughed, giggled throughout that entire trial, knowing Charlie was fighting for his life. That was true at moments, yes. Wendy played that victim card and tried to trick everyone into thinking she was a victim. It's sickening to watch her. And she posted a picture of Wendy at Charlie's trial with a big grin on her face. The article goes on. I'm going to start out by saying that I believe Donna has an excellent chance of being successful at trial under one main condition. Interesting. Donna's son, Charlie, was charged with first degree murder and he lost his trial and is now in prison with a life sentence. I said it before his trial, during his trial, and after his trial, he lost because he chose to protect, lie, and defend his sister, Wendy, who was married to Dan Markell in 2012. Unless the state has some bombshell information about Donna, I remain supporting her. From the evidence I have seen so far, the only one in the family, I believe in my opinion, that would have murdered Dan and had multiple motives to do so was Wendy Adelson. I also believe Wendy had planned this for well over a year. So I wonder what the author thinks um, I wonder what the author thinks about Donna having stated that her, her Donna's main goal for uh, the divorce and, you know, all the hearings after the divorce was to get Wendy and the children relocated back to South Florida. That's a pretty big motive. That's a, that's a huge motive. I wonder if this author is going to address that at all. Let's keep reading. I will say this about Donna and Charlie. I do believe they became involved in the murder, but only after the fact. I think Wendy called her brother and mother lying and tricking them into believing that she was going to be blamed for the murder. I have no doubt she extorted thousands of dollars from both Char Charlie and Donna, and they were too blind to see the obvious clues. If Donna and Charlie ever want to see the light of day, they need to tell the truth about Wendy. There is no other way. Interesting. A huge red flag that was completely ignored was the fact that Donna told Wendy to put on her best act for July 31st. That date is so important because they set up the first hit in June of 2023. 
No, that's got to be a typo. That's a typo. The second hit happened on the 18th of July. My point is, if Donna was the one who set up that hit on the 18th, why would she be giving Wendy advice on how to act regarding a filing Dan made to the courts? Donna, Charlie, and Harvey tried to resolve things with Dan the civilized way by offering to pay for his expenses to travel from Miami if he moved there. I found their offer very generous and sincere. They were the ones footing the bill for Wendy's trips and they wanted her to stop pounding them. If you at Wendy, maybe if you look at Wendy, she was with Katie around the same time both hits were planned. Wendy even canceled a trip with Jeff from the 11th to the 17th. She had to be there for that hit. I believe she drove to the crime scene to make sure it happened so she could pay Katie. There was bad behavior with all the family members, but I don't blame Donna for being angry with Dan, knowing the lies Wendy told them. Okay. If Harvey, Charlie, and Donna were so evil and cunning, why didn't they go after Rob's wife? Rob is the, I believe he's the eldest child um, of Harvey and Donna and is estranged from the family and was estranged, I believe, you know, since the time of um, Dan Markell's murder. They, Harvey, Charlie, Charlie, and Donna, blamed his wife, Rob's wife, for, for taking their son away. They had more motive to harm her than they ever did with Dan. So this author is basically bringing in the eldest uh, Adelson son. And it's my understanding that he was married initially to an individual who um, they later divorced. And then he remarried to a woman that was unapproved by his parents. And perhaps that's one of the reasons of um, the estrangement. So, um, I mean, I don't, I don't know if at the time they had children yet, but I believe one of the reasons that Donna Harvey and possibly even Charlie wanted Wendy to come back to South Florida was so that they could be close to their grandchildren. I have absolutely no respect for Charlie's lawyer, Rashbaum. And I hope Donna has second thoughts about keeping him involved. Okay. The first thing I thought when I saw Charlie's defense team was where are all the lawyers? This, this lawyer obviously tricked Charlie into believing he had this case and he didn't need to hire anyone else. He was, he was liked at all. Maybe he was not liked at all. The comments about his lawyer spoke volumes. It was obvious to me he wanted that big payout for himself at the cost of Charlie's freedom. That wasn't the only issue I had with him. I was shocked that he would be taking advice from Wendy's lawyer while she was testifying. Not only that, but he went out of his way to protect Wendy. That was, in my opinion, the only reason Charlie lost. There was no way in hell he could have won that case and covered up for Wendy. A few things about this. So, Dan Rashbaum, I would, I would not say that he's a terrible attorney. I would say that he is an attorney with a client that brings a case that's not favorable for the client. There's only so much an attorney can do with the facts and with the evidence. Um, so he really had an uphill battle. I don't know that, I, I don't know how this author knows that um, that Rashbaum was taking advice from Wendy's lawyer while she was testifying. I haven't heard any of that information before, or I'm not sure where that allegation came from. Um, but 
I don't know, having absolutely no respect for, for Rashbaum, that's fine. You can have your opinion. This author can have um, his or her own opinion. And, you know, that's fine. Whether or not we think that it's a good idea for Rashbaum to also be involved in the defense of Donna, um, I think most people would agree, including attorneys, that it's probably not the best idea. I do not believe Charlie and Donna have any chance at freedom so long as that lawyer is involved in the case. The first thing I thought when I read the nasty text messages from Donna to family members was why. Why would Donna put in texts that could be traced back to her slandering Dan? It made no sense. And when I realized that Wendy had immediately implicated her brother and her parents in the murder, the picture soon became clear. Like I said, Wendy started to plan this over a year before Dan was murdered. I believe Donna was tormented by Wendy with all her lies of being in an abusive relationship. Okay, tell me more. I read Donna's messages knowing that Wendy hounded her family for years about being abused and unhappy. Some of the things that Dan filed in his divorce proceedings would enrage anyone, especially if Donna believed every word Wendy said. Now, I remember that portion in Charlie's trial when Wendy was on the stand and um, Wendy and, uh, and Georgia kind of had a little back and forth whether or not there were allegations of, um, of Dan Markell being abusive to Wendy. And Georgia was like, well, where in the proceedings is there an allegation of abuse? And Wendy was like, oh, I'll, I'll have to look through it. It's going to take a, a while. And Georgia was like, because it's not in there. And Wendy puts this grimace smile on her face and is like, yeah, it actually is in there. And then there was an objection. So there was nothing more made of that. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't doubt that Wendy made allegations of abuse. Um, I wouldn't doubt that she told her parents about that. She did testify that um, that she told her mother, you know, how her relationship with Dan Markell was going. So I don't doubt that. Wendy had no issues hounding her parents with details of her horrible life. She, they were getting, she knew they were getting up there in age and her father's health was not good at the time, but that didn't stop Wendy from tricking and manipul man manipulating them into doing her bidding. I know myself, if someone had done to my child what Wendy claims was done to her, I wouldn't have been as kind as Donna, says the author. There are so many reasons why I do not believe the hit was set up by Donna by Charlie and Donna. One, Wendy was the only one who knew Dan's schedule and the hitman testified that he was told this hit was happening because the mother of two wanted full custody of the kids. He also stated that the hit had to be done by the 18th. Wendy was the only one who knew Dan was leaving town on the 18th. So is the author going to explain how Wendy's knowledge got to the hitman because there wasn't evidence of communications between the two. Of course, there are burner, phone, burner phones, but there's no evidence of that. Um, what we do know is that Wendy spoke with her brother, Charlie. Charlie was always speaking with Katie and Katie was speaking with the hitman. So that train, as that train proceeds, we see a natural progression of the information from Wendy to Charlie to Katie to the hitman. Number two, I noticed that Wendy was injected into every significant date that was linked to information about plans for the hit. Okay, According to Katie McManawa, the hit was first brought up by Charlie at a Halloween party in 2013. On that same day, Wendy had canceled on the purchase of a house in Tallahassee. Was it the same day? I thought a lot about Katie's accusations about Charlie, and I realized that Katie had lied about everything throughout every trial she testified at. What really struck, what really stuck out was she said the plans were made while they were at this Halloween party, 
So that would have meant Wendy had to have heard that news about the hitman early enough to cancel the sale on that day. I knew Katie was lying. I knew that she threw Charlie under the bus for no other reason than revenge for both herself and for her ex-boyfriend, the hitman. Three, less than an hour after Dan was murdered, after Dan was murdered, Wendy drove right up to that crime scene. She lied several times while testifying, saying she never drove to the crime scene. She obviously felt confident enough that her cell phone wouldn't have put her right there at the crime scene, but Wendy knows, now knows, an officer was informed about her vehicle and what she looked like. He gave a positive description of the vehicle, so Wendy had to change her story once again and admit she drove up to the crime scene tape. As far as I know, there is no evidence to prove that Charlie or Donna knew about the hit that soon after. Four, in my opinion, Wendy didn't just want her ex gone. I believe she wanted her two boys gone also. Wow. Wow. What an allegation. Huh. If Donna and Charlie had set up this hit, no way in HE26, they would have picked a day and time when Dan had the boys. What the biggest clue for me is Wendy saw all those medic vans, police cars, and forensic vehicles, and she claimed she never called the school to find out if her boys were okay, and she never called Dan. That was a huge red flag for me. Another thing that proved to me Wendy was running this show was the fact that she brought up a conversation her and the detective had in the car on the way to the station. After she was in the interview room being recorded, she asked the detective, why she was being treated like a suspect. At this point, Wendy wasn't told what happened at Dan's place. So why would she ask if she was a suspect for what she thought was a fallen tree? Wendy did another very suspicious thing. After she got to the station, she listened to her messages and told the detective a friend called asking what was going on at Dan's place. The whole thing stunk of Wendy's involvement. Well. This is very true, and it's very, very suspicious that Wendy saw all of the activity on Trescott, and I don't believe for a minute that she thought that a tree fell down. Why would there be crime, crime scene tape for a fallen tree? Why would there be all the law enforcement vehicles for a fallen tree? That It just doesn't make sense. The fact that she didn't call her boys school to find out if they were okay, if they were there safe, I, 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 I can't get over that. I, I cannot get over that. Um, it just doesn't make any sense at all. It makes no logical sense that she wouldn't have try to ensure their safety after seeing that type of activity at the house where they had been sleeping that night, the night before. Um, also, yes, I did pick up on when Wendy said in her interview um, that she stated in the police car on the drive to the interview, um, whether she was a suspect. A suspect of what, Wendy? Why would you think that you're a suspect? A suspect for a fallen tree? So those are just some things that just, they just don't make sense. Five, at times Donna would message Charlie and warn him to tread softly around Wendy because she was very upset. She who was upset? Wendy was upset or Donna was upset? Probably Wendy, right? There was no doubt Wendy was in full control of her family, even though she tried to play that victim card constantly. I mean, it does seem like, it does seem like Wendy had her family wrapped around her little finger. It, I definitely got the vibe that, you know, she, she was the princess of the family. And, um, you know, when the princess is in trouble, the family comes to her rescue. 
So I, I, I understand that that's probably how this family ran. Six, in my opinion, there was no doubt Wendy was already in a relationship with her longtime friend. If she wasn't involved with someone else, she wouldn't have filed for divorce before she moved out. When the jury was allowed to ask questions, one of the questions they asked was how soon she started to date. Wendy is famous for giving vague answers for fear of being charged with perjury. And this was one of those times. Wendy told the jury she started to date her friend after she filed for divorce. She was still living with Dan at the time she filed for divorce. So she obviously had to prove to her boyfriend she was serious about ending it with Dan. I don't. I don't know what this paragraph means. I I don't know about this whole boyfriend on the side. Um, at the time, she was still living with Dan. I, I haven't seen any evidence presented um, to support that allegation. Six, again, this is, this is misnumbered. After Wendy moved out, she didn't give Dan the address to where her and the boys were living. I had a lot of questions about that. The prosecutor asked Wendy if she rented a place before she left Dan, and she said she did. I believed Wendy didn't want Dan to have the address because she moved out of his home and probably into her boyfriend's place. I'm curious if she was the person who signed the rental agreement. Well, I'm curious about who signed the rental agreement as well. But I, I haven't heard anything about Wendy moving out of the home she shared with Dan Markell and into a home with a boyfriend. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure where that came from. Um, what I do have a problem with is the fact that if if it in, in fact is true um, that Wendy didn't give Dan the address of where her and the boys were living. That, that just doesn't make any logical sense to me. Seven, I don't believe for one second Donna or Charlie would have planned that hit on Danny, on Dan risking losing their perfect lives. That evidence doesn't prove to me anyone other than Wendy and Katie set up that hit. I disagree. <laughs> I disagree. Um, maybe believe, they believe they had perfect lives, but they also believe that they were slick enough and smart enough to cover their tracks and to not get caught not get found out for, um, for their actions. I don't know if they didn't think it through, but you know, people don't do things like that, anticipating getting caught. They do things like that to try and get away, um, scot-free. So I, I don't know about that. Eight, Donna doesn't realize it. But she never knew her own daughter. Wendy only told her family what she wanted them to know. I do not believe Donna, Charlie, or Harvey would have helped Wendy move out if they knew the truth that she left for another man. Here we go again. I don't, I haven't heard any evidence that supports this. Donna didn't know Wendy robbed Dan of $500,000. They didn't know she robbed the safety deposit box of precious pieces of jewelry that belonged to Dan and his family. Now, I have heard those allegations, and I believe those were allegations that were raised or being raised in the um, in the custody hearings and post-divorce hearings. Um, did Donna know about those money transactions? I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's funny though, because at the arrest of Donna, I was just thinking to myself, you remember when they were taking off her jewelry? I was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, what if like, what if she had the ring that Wendy 
took, accepted from Dan Markell and never gave it back. What if Donna, for some reason, had that ring and it was being taken off at that moment of her arrest in the airport? Anyways, neither here nor there. Nine, Donna was too blind, was too blind to see what was really going on with Wendy. Donna raised those boys and no issues revolving her life around them. Wendy never had a good rep for being a good mother because she was never with them. She needed her mother to raise those boys so she could have a new life. And that is exactly what happened. Donna did say in a conversation that Wendy needed them to babysit the boys, but now that they are older, Wendy doesn't need them anymore. Nothing Wendy did was in the best interest of boys or her family. Wendy cares about Wendy and nothing else. Um, I agree with this. Um, I think Donna was coming to realize that uh, perhaps Wendy was manipulating her and had been using her and Harvey um, in the hot mic wiretap in which uh, Donna thought that the jail call to Charlie had been dropped, but she kept on talking about a lot of stuff, including, um, you know, their escape plan to non-extradition company, a uh, country. Um, Donna did lament. She, she lamented the fact that, you know, she was always there for Wendy and, you know, she would cancel her plans whenever Wendy, you know, asked her to, to watch the boys or to do something for Wendy. And now Donna is just asking Wendy for a little bit of help, you know, help me research non-extradition companies, help me, you know, find a safe place for the will and for the life insurance policies and for the trust documents. Help me, Wendy, help me. You know, you don't live that far. Why can't you just come over and help me? I've done so much for you. I have dropped everything, you know, at your beck and call for all these years and now you won't even talk to me. You won't even talk to me about things that are unrelated, directly unrelated to the case. So yes, I believe Donna really was lamenting and was maybe seeing the light of um, who Wendy really was. Wendy cares about Wendy and nothing else. 10. When you put all the dates lined up in a row, they all they all add up to Wendy. Why do you add dates? Wendy was with Katie right before both hits. She canceled the purchase for that house on the exact same day. As Katie claims, Charlie asked her about a hitman. Are you kidding me? How stupid does Katie and Wendy think we are? Now, I haven't looked at the timeline to confirm what she's saying is true. You know, the cancellation of the house in Tallahassee. Wendy had testified that she canceled that transaction um, because she hadn't gotten the money from Dan Markell that he owed her. And that was the reason that she was not going to be moving forward with the purchase of the house in Tallahassee. Um, I don't know the date of when that occurred. Um, but gosh, I feel like it's really a, a, a quick turnaround to make plans for a hit. And on the same day, realize that you, you in fact won't need the house after all. Um, that's, you know, that's really interesting. I'd love to see that, uh, that contract for sale. I wonder how much she put down. In escrow. Hmm. I don't believe her affair was the only reason for leaving Dan. I believe money played a huge part in the way she handled that divorce. What kind of a person waits till their spouse goes on a business trip to move out and take their children with, without warning or forwarding address? Well, it's the type of person who avoids confrontation at all costs. And I think we heard Charlie say this. I can't remember if it was in testimony or 
on a, a wiretap. But we know Charlie has said this in the past. And we also know that Donna has said this in the past. In that same hot mic um, call that I just mentioned a few moments ago, Donna said that, you know, Wendy's going to be nervous as soon as she sees that I want to talk to her. You know, she she gets all nervous. So that's why I said, you know, this has nothing, capital letters, nothing to do with the case. So we know that Wendy is the kind of person who probably likes, you know, moving quietly to avoid confrontation and doing things in the dark so that, you know, nobody, nobody calls her on anything. Um, so that's the kind of person who would wait until your husband is out of town to give him divorce papers. That type of person would do that. Charlie was shocked at his trial when he learned of all the money Wendy gained by the death of Dan. Of course, Wendy testified that she didn't gain any money. There was only, um, I think, life insurance policies for the boys. And it's my understanding, luckily, that the Markells have um, are trustees of over that money. So I don't think that Wendy has direction or control over those funds. Wendy was asked specifically by the prosecutor if, if she or her boys gained financially and she flat out said no. Okay, that's what I just said. She was then confronted with evidence that proved she gained hundreds of thousands by his death. I don't think that's entirely true, um, but, you know, as if you want to see, see it a certain way, um, then you can. Wendy wasn't going to settle until she had it all. She was asked by the prosecutor if she inquired about life, the life insurance policy Dan had. Again, her vague answer was she didn't remember. I recall there was testimony at some point. Oh, there's so much information in this case. It's hard to keep track of where I've heard different things. Um, but yeah, I think I did hear, or I recall hearing that she made a phone call to um, the life insurance company a couple days, a day, I don't know how long, but a short time after um, after Dan had been murdered, inquiring into those funds. In my opinion, there are too many red flags that prove to me Donna couldn't and wouldn't have thrown her life away to do that hit on Dan. Both Charlie and Donna had the perfect lives and they stated that. Not Wendy though, her life was crumbling and she knew if Dan filed those papers on the 18th, as his lawyer stated, her life and career would be completely destroyed. Wendy tried to come across like she was the super good Samaritan, spelling, helping victims. What a joke. Wendy knew her brother Charlie was going to Asian countries so he could be with children in a way that would have put him away for life. And she said and did nothing. It was also said they found child porn on her computer. You couldn't make this stuff up. I have never seen that allegation. I don't know what the author is talking about, but I, I've never heard that before. Why would they find child porn on her computer? What? I wonder to myself how these loving, protective parents could have raised such monsters. Donna said some pretty horrible things about Dan. I do not fault her for that, considering all the lies Wendy had been telling her for years about Dan. When Charlie laughed in court, I didn't take that as anything more than him poking fun at his mother for acting to crazy. I do not believe the Markel family with ever will ever have true justice until the day Wendy is convicted for the crime. Not many agree with me, but in my opinion, Wendy had so many victims that were hurt and destroyed by her deceptions, outright lies, and cruel behavior. She has damaged those boys and this will follow them their entire life. She tricked and lied and manipulated every one in her life. Her greed and self selfishness destroyed her entire family and she sat there through each trial, smiling and laughing, believing she had the whole world, believing she was a victim. 
My theory on how the state planned on reaching the point of an arrest on Wendy. I never understood why Charlie and Donna were arrested before Wendy. I never understood why Georgia slash prosecutor focused so hard on exposing how Wendy was clearly involved in the setup of the hit. I think I understand more now since Charlie's trial. I'm convinced that Georgia knew all along that Wendy and Katie set up that hit. I also believe she knew Katie would lie under oath to make sure Charlie was convicted. There's no doubt Katie set Charlie up and wanted revenge for herself and her boyfriend. She chose Garcia over her own children and speaks volumes to what type of a person Katie is. She is liar, fraud, thief, and manipulator. It is no wonder Katie and Wendy hit it off. Wendy never met anyone she didn't badmouth Dan to. So have no doubt she told Katie everything and Katie was quick to inform her that she had someone who would take care of her problem. Katie knew that Charlie and his family were prepared to pay Dan $1 million, but Wendy refused to do it. No way Wendy was handing over a million dollars to a man she hated. I also believe that Wendy did not want Dan around to see who she was dating. Dan knew about her longtime friend, and it wouldn't have taken him long to figure out Wendy left him for that other man. Throughout every, tri throughout every trial, Georgia brought up so much evidence proving that Wendy had been setting up her family from the start. Wendy's lies and deception started back in 2012-2013 when she started to hound her parents about the issues in her marriage. She had to make sure that they ab absolutely hated Dan in order to make her plan work. Georgia brought up so many incriminating things to prove Wendy's guilt. I never understood why she never confronted Katie about Wendy's involvement. I believe Georgia arrested Charlie and Donna first, hoping that what they learned about Wendy would make them turn on her. She knew Charlie didn't know she drove to the crime scene. He didn't know she named him and his family as being possible suspects in that interview in 2014. Charlie didn't know Wendy robbed Dan of hundreds of thousands of dollars. I entire internet has blown up getting on board to help the prosecutors expose evidence that proves Wendy's guilt. Oh, these ads are terrible. Okay, so that's it. That is the entire article. So what do you think? What do you think? I feel like this article is more, um, it's less in defense of Donna Adelson and it's more, you know, in prosecution of Wendy. I don't think that just because Wendy is guilty, allegedly, I don't think that exonerates Donna or Charlie um, in, in the crimes. And I don't believe that this author touched on that at all. Um, you know, they, they laid out a lot of information, a lot of good information, but, you know, it, there's just no explanation for some of the things that, um, some of the, the coincidences, right? All of these coincidences that are occurring. Um, they also lay in the hands of both Donna and Charlie. So does this author also believe in the extortion angle because why else would Donna have been why else would Donna have been writing checks to Katie what was the reasoning behind that that wasn't addressed at all and I believe that that is that's super incriminating it's very incriminating that Katie was gifted their used Lexus. Now you can say it's a used Lexus, but my goodness, have you checked used, used car prices? Lexus cars hold their value. So I, you know, I didn't Kelly blue book it or anything, but I can guarantee that 
it was several, it was probably worth several thousands of dollars. Put that on top of the money that the Adelson Institute had paid Katie for a job that she never needed to show up for. Um, you know, that that's very incriminating. The author also never addressed why was Donna running? Why was she fleeing? And why did she wait until, you know, she realized that uh, that Charlie was a convict? He wasn't getting out. Why was that? Why the timing? If she had such a good life. I mean, there's just so many, there's just so many other coincidences that just don't bode in favor of Donna's innocence. That it would be... I don't know. It would be negligent to, you know, just assume that she was an innocent bystander with all the information that we have, with all the evidence that has been brought out. Um, mm -mm. I'm not buying it, but it was fun to read though. So let me know your comments. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content and I will see you in the next drop. Bye.